This segment sponsored by Foster Financial. Welcome to Money Mondays. It's time to gain some women's wealth advice. We are going to discuss financial topics that can impact you and give you the tools for success. And joining me today is the Vice President of Foster Financial, Caleb Doan. Hi, Caleb. Hi. Good morning. Thanks very much. Good morning. Yes. <laughs> so we're continuing our Money Mondays. Mm -hmm. And we have been talking about life insurance in different ways, mm -hmm. um, term life insurance and then nursing home insurance. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to talk Talk about something new. So what do you have for us today? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, today I wanted to, to focus on kind of a new type of life insurance that, that is very, you know, prominent, um, affects a lot of women. And so that's mm -hmm. universal life insurance. And okay. so, you know, we talked a little bit about term, you know, a lot of times that's important for people during their working years, mm -hmm. maybe into a couple years in their retirement. Nursing home insurance obviously affects people most of the time towards the end of their retirement. Mm -hmm. Universal life insurance is one that can be used kind of throughout some entire life and so okay. um, this is a, a type of life insurance that I think a lot of people you know may have, have bought into a policy like this mm -hmm. back in the day right. um, but these are policies that really need to be monitored relatively closely okay. and a lot of times they're they're not actually and so that's that's something I always take a look mm -hmm. at when clients come in mm -hmm. um, and something I thought would be helpful to chat about yes okay sounds great and so with the universal life insurance what age should someone start it? Mm. And also, um, when you say that people have to monitor it closely, is it because it's a shorter term, mm. so it's not something that's longevity? Yeah, so um, people can get it at, at all ages. Mm -hmm. Generally, with, with life insurance, you typically need to get into it, you know, when you're under the age of, of maybe 70, anything lower okay. than that, okay. you know, typically you can get covered. Um, over 70, sometimes it, it gets a little difficult to get insurance mm -hmm. um, just because you're, you're higher risk to the insurance company. Mm -hmm. But you find people who have universal policies at, you know, 25 years old, you find right. people with them um, who are 60 years old. Mm -hmm. The benefit of the universal life policy is it's designed to last your entire life. So there isn't a set term on it. It's supposed to last your entire life okay. and then there's flexibility on the actual amount that you have to pay into it mm -hmm. so kind of the benefit is is you know at least from the insurance company's perspective they'll say hey you know if there happens to be a month where it's difficult for you to make the premium that's okay it won't lapse the policy immediately by you not paying this premium mm. the downside of that is there's, there's sort of performance in the contract that is based on the insurance company and, and different factors. Mm -hmm. And if that performance doesn't keep up, that could cause the policy to eventually lapse. And so oh. it's really important to, to take a look at these policies mm -hmm. really every single year and right. basically say, okay, is this policy you know, on a path to success mm -hmm. or do we need to make some changes, pay more into it, reduce the death benefit, whatever it might be to make sure that it doesn't lapse for people. Hmm. That's interesting. So can you share some of the variables that may mm -hmm. impact an insurance like that? Like perhaps is it age or mm. just, um, like you said, the amount that you put into it or your health? Does that apply in any way? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Some of the, the key variables that will impact how the policy performs, probably the, the most important one is the actual interest rate that's credited to that account every mm. single year. And, and that's you know loosely correlated with the interest rates in the overall economy. And so, you know, we saw 20 years ago, interest rates were, were relatively high. Mm -hmm. And so people bought into these contracts and there was an assumption in this contract that they would get, you know, four or 5% return every single year. And oh. then of course we know, you know, back in 2015, 2016, interest rates were super, super low for a really long period of time. Right. And so a lot of these policies underperformed. And mm -hmm. so, you know, they were projecting it out saying, hey, if you get 5% a year, policy looks great. Mm -hmm. And then in reality, the policy didn't get 5% a year. And so that's why, especially with policies written, you know, 20, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. it's really important to take a look at them and see yeah. if, if any changes need to be made. And since those policies are not necessarily fixed terms or long term, mm -hmm. do they have the potential of increasing um, the actual premium each year? And is that something that people 
may not be notified of or may not realize that their premium could change and they're paying more. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of the downside of the, yeah. the flexibility that, that, that they say because they say, hey, you know, you could lower the premium if, if you need to, but the mm -hmm. flip side of that is true as well. That if the policy is underperforming, maybe you need to pay more premium into it. Yeah. And sometimes that can be sort of a catch-22 also. The, the mm -hmm. insurance company could tell you, hey, you need to pay more into it, and so people do but then maybe it still lapses anyways. And so that's why we can sort of get what we call an in-force illustration on mm -hmm. the policy and basically look out what the policy is gonna do. And then we can advise of, hey, you know, it does make sense to, to maybe pay a little bit more into this to keep it in force, or, hey, this policy doesn't look good any way we cut it. We don't want you to dump more money into this. Therefore, we're actually gonna, gonna surrender the policy, maybe take a little bit of the cash value back, mm -hmm. get as much as you can out of it, and then not have to pay into it anymore. Okay, so that is such a um, profound point that you made because I was going to ask, when you have a policy or maybe multiple policies, let, let's say that your parents take out a policy for you, mm -hmm. maybe you had a personal one, but then you got one with your job. Yeah. And so you have so many floating that you decide, you know what, I don't need to pay into all of these. Right. But I didn't know about the, the surrendering and being mm -hmm. able to get some type of cash value back. Is that in all policies or does, did it have to be set up like that from the start? So all, all policies that retain a cash value mm -hmm. have that ability for you to surrender mm -hmm. it. So, you know, one notably that doesn't have that is a term insurance policy. Those don't okay. retain a cash value, but okay. whole life policies, universal, index universal, all of those retain a cash value. Mm -hmm. So some people might not even know that their policy actually ha has a value right. that they could take, you know, without passing away. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we just had a case recently where somebody, you know, their policy was expected to lapse probably within the next, you know, seven years. And they were expected to live a lot longer than that. Mm -hmm. And so we said, you know, hey, it, it might actually make sense for you to surrender this policy, take the cash value in it, and use that value. Because if you don't, in seven years, the policy is just going to lapse. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. See, this is why we need you, Caleb. <laughs> I keep saying that because the thing about it is we can only have so much information, but mm -hmm. it's it's so much to keep up with. Policies right. change, there's loopholes, and there are so many um, advantages that we may be able to utilize, mm -hmm. but we don't know about it. Yeah. So that's yeah, why we course. need a financial advisor. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much thank you. for sharing this today. Mm -hmm. As you guys know, Foster Financial is here to help women plan for retirement. So if you have any questions, you can contact them for a complimentary consultation. We'll have their number listed below and we'll be right back. This segment sponsored by Foster Financial.